Well, hello and welcome back to Carly House Flower Farm. This week I thought I would do something I haven't done in a while. So it is going to be a looking at a week of what my life looks like here on the farm. Uh, we're coming into midwinter and we're starting to kind of ramp some stuff up here on the farm and also for our niche nursery that we're doing this year and farm stand. So I thought I would take you along as we kind of prepare this week, I guess. Um, it's just the start of the season. So um, I thought I would kind of give you a look at what my life looks like in the winter time. I think there's a conception that like farmers tend to take, or at least flower farmers tend to take the winter off. I wouldn't say that's true. We're always doing something but our life does slow down a little bit it's starting to at this point ramp up so generally from Christmas till the end of January it's it's a lot of just you know relaxing planning you know you might plan for one day some things and then you might be on the computer answering questions we do um we're a farmer florist is what they call it so we do a lot of weddings and events we live kind of in an area of the country where we have a lot of wineries around us we have a lot of destination weddings that we do we start to plan those generally in january and some of them are for this year and some are for the following year. So we're doing kind of this multiple wedding event planning, designing. So there's a lot of back and forth that goes on. And then there's also a lot of planning that I'm doing as far as what we're planning for the gardens. So um, that being said, I thought I would just give you kind of a sneak peek into what our week looks like here on the farm as the winter in midwinter and what we're planning and doing and just give you an idea. I don't know. I thought it's, you know, kind of, some people find it fascinating um, that we can work year round. We live in Oregon, so we're in the Willamette Valley where it's a little bit warmer. We can plant, we can do all the things year round here. So uh, not everybody is like that, I get it. Not everybody is, you know, we get blanketed with snow or ice for maybe a couple days or a week at the most. And, you know, it's kind of nice just to like have the excuse of not getting out in the garden. But for the most part, it's pretty mild. So anyways, here is kind of a look at our week and my thoughts on winter gardening. So today is Monday and what I have on the dock, well this morning, which you didn't see, was I was emailing a bride billing somebody that needed um, a bill right away, so I did that. Um, I hung out with Riley just a little bit, made breakfast, did all the things, kind of swept up the house, did some laundry, you know, just kind of, that's kind of how my day starts. And now I'm just in the studio planting up some of our little baby starts that on our last video you saw we got in. Uh, these are just for, mostly for our hanging baskets that we're doing here in the little farm stand that we have. So each one of these trays has 50 little baby starts in them. So my goal is to do several trays at a, at a time my back kind of starts to hurt your upper it does and so I, I try and like space it out i might come do these and then go do something in the big greenhouse and that kind of thing so today i don't have anybody on the farm with me riley is here but she's not working today she's doing she's getting ready for a little fundraiser that she's doing at church and so that's completely separate from what we're doing, but she's putting together a bucket of flowers and things like that. They're having like a Valentine ball. So she's working on that today. And like I said, I'm just working on potting up a few things.
so today I have the girls here, both of them, Riley and Emma. And so it's kind of a full day. We try and get a lot done, kind of a lot crammed into the, the, the two days that I have them right now during the season. So a lot of farms, like I said, don't have employees during this time of year. They generally will lay them off um, until the, it, the season starts to ramp up. And I've chosen to keep them, so it's, I have to get a little creative sometimes with just, you know, making sure we have enough funds to last until, you know, all the, the spring flowers start to pop and we're able to go to market with them. So anyways, it's always worked and I, I don't worry about it too much, but you know, Okay, so Jason's gone this week as well. He's usually gone Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Not not all the time, but uh, he travels a lot. So it's my job to get all the animals done this morning. So I'm heading out to do that. I have some scraps from the kitchen. It's always kind of a nice time to go and visit the animals just to quiet before the busy day gets started. potting up all of these beautiful plants. Um, we kind of made a system for ourselves and that's what we're gonna be working on this morning. And then we're gonna go out to the greenhouse and we have some extra things like extra snapdragons that didn't have, we didn't have room for and some foxglove. I think there's a little bit of scabiosa maybe, just a white one. Um, and we're just gonna take all those little extra starts and pot those up as well so we can use them somewhere. Um, I'm just putting together a bucket for a friend that ordered some loose flowers for her to put together for Valentine's Day. Um, and the pictures they sent us had the baby's breath and eucalyptus and roses, but we opted out for tulips since they're in season. And we had some really beautiful ones. So I'm just putting that together for her. This is some fresh eucalyptus from our farm. We just needed to cut it down. <laughs> it was getting a bit out of hand. So I got the girls started on both their jobs and I'm gonna head out to the greenhouse and cut some Dusty Miller we have. It's actually got some really nice long stem length to it. And then I'm gonna cut some Curly Willow just to restock our market booth with. Um, and then also we're gonna head up to the woodlands today and grab some moss. And we're going to also grab some fern. So this is just the woodland fern that we have. And that's gonna probably fill our day for the most part. That's a lot to do in one day. <laughs> we'll see if we get it all done. We are in the woods again. Oh, it's upside down. And we're collecting moss and specifically sheet moss. So we are looking for any fallen logs or trees or some of the sides of the trees have really good sheet moss. And I found this little stump, stump that has the perfect looking sheet moss. Oh yes. So I should be able to just lift it off. Probably break it right here. Uh, yeah, collecting moss to sell up at market. Moss is really cool. It's one of the old, I think it is the oldest living plant. It started off, it was the first plant, you know. It's its own family. There's lots of different varieties of moss. It's not just one type, but yeah, it's very prominent here in the Pacific Northwest, as you can see, and it grows on everything. It'll grow on your roof if you're not careful here. But yeah, it's pretty. I'm literally standing on like a huge bed of it. It's gotta be here after we die, you know? It's one of those things that's just gonna last forever. Like sharks. Sharks are older than trees. If you didn't know that, now you do. So you can see this little trail right through here. Probably some deer or something like that. I don't know if you can see that, but 
it's kind of fun. We come across these every once in a while. You can see their little footprints. Little, they're pretty big. There's elk in here as well as bobcats and cougars. So we're always very aware. But you can tell they kind of go right down through there. Just like that. Down into the forest. mushroom it's so big though it's literally like it says my face don't eat it but it's cool don't you think that's an elk print yeah that's pretty big because look it goes this way yeah here's another they don't look super fresh but it's like they were stomping around here down Okay, so we went up to the woods, got everything. I'm gonna load my car and actually head to Portland tonight um, just because I wanna get it done. And tomorrow I just wanna wanna focus on the house and I've got a whole bunch of computer stuff to do as well. But today was good. We got all of the new baby starts planted. They're all over the studio right now, which um, Jason's gonna get uh, me put together a couple more of these racks or I just need to buy them. Um, we have a whole bunch, but they're all being used right now. And so, um, it's just something I need to do. The, I went ahead and cut a few things. I cut a little bit of curly willow for the market and then I also cut just the Dusty Miller behind me. It's here, it's so gorgeous. So I'm gonna take that on up to the market. I also have a little gift basket that I'm putting together. It's more of a container. Uh, we have the Pacific Northwest Cut Flower Growers Association meet up at Oregon State in about a week. I believe it's in, not this weekend, but next. And we're just donating a little something. So Emma is inside getting some of our sweet peas together. We had some extra little goodies. Some of the sweet peas we harvested last year and saved. We had a few left after planting. So some lucky person is going to get a King Ransom sweet pea, which is very coveted this year. There's always something that's like, ooh, the new thing that's out there that's hard to get. So I had one pack, I thought that would be kind of fun to put in there. And then a couple others. I have just our sweet pea mix and then another kind of pink one. I forget which one I picked. But it'll be really nice for whoever gets it. I'm also gonna tuck in one of my books and some more starts and things like that. So I thought it would be a nice gift. So I'm gonna get that put together and I'm gonna take that up because someone up there at the Portland market is going to actually take it on to the growers meetup because I am not going this year. So this is what I came up with. It's just, I had this leftover container. I thought I would fill this. It's probably 12 inches across. And then I've got my book, a bag, which I'm gonna stamp. Once I find the stamp, Riley's here helping me. So I'm gonna stamp this with our sign logo and then I'm gonna fill it up, not totally, but with some anemones. So we have a few left, which I thought would be kind of fun. It's still time, you can still plant them, but this is, um, so I have some rinoculus amidine porcelain left over. And then I also have some orange, so I'm gonna combine the two because I think that's gonna be a fun look. And so that's gonna go in the bag. And then we have the sweet peas and, oh, I have this little succulent I was gonna pop in just from the garden that we have. And I was gonna put it in this clear vase because I thought that would be kind of fun just to kind of pop in here. I don't know, something simple and sweet. We normally have honey, but we don't have any honey at the moment, but I'm gonna get it wrapped up.
Emma and Riley got all the starts finished. Um, so we have got them all over the floor and under the table for right now until we get another rack. So all of our racks are full in the greenhouse and inside of the little grow area. We've got a lot of product for just the garden and things like that. But yeah, it looks so good. Everything looks amazing. This is the fastest we've ever done it and we have more to come, but this is just the start of the season. So I know not everybody is gonna love all that plastic on this, but it's the only way that I can keep things secure without things walking off. And it's what I had on hand. So I think it turned out cute. I like kind of the combination of the black bucket and then tied in with the black ribbon is cute. And then I think what I'm gonna do is just put a little tag saying what's in the bundle so that it makes it clear that people can actually look to see what it is. So I think I'm just gonna write out one of these cute little white tags and pop it on the top of there so people can look at that and say, ooh, this is something I'd like to put my ticket in uh, to win. So some lucky person will get this. It's a, it's a good gift basket, you know? It's got ranunculus, the succulent, the sweet peas, and my book. So pretty good. There you go, all done. I got everything written on the back here, just the, just what's included in the gift basket. And I think someone's gonna walk away with a really, really nice, fun gift from our farm. Well, good morning. It is a chilly one. I am heading out to the studio to make a couple more mixed bouquets for an order that's going to one of the farm stands. Well, it's not a farm stand, it's more of like a hardware store that has ordered a few more. We have sent several bunches and we just kind of do it so that they stay really fresh and beautiful and um, just keeping them restocked because it is Valentine's Day today. And then the rest of the day, I'm gonna head in, do a little paperwork with weddings and I have got to do a little potting up out in the greenhouse. So that's what my day looks like. I'm gonna start here in the greenhouse. I'm gonna get the heaters on and we heated it quite a bit last night. So it should be fairly warm, but I'm gonna take you along as I make bouquets. Oh yes, nice and warm. So I've got my papers ready to go. I went ahead and stamped them all, got them folded. We have all these beautiful tulips and I have some wax flower that we purchased this in because it doesn't grow here. It's really pretty though, airy. We have some of our woodland fern and we have some eucalyptus tips and some curly willow to finish it off. It's really, really simple, but it's just a sweet little Valentine pick me up. So the bouquets are done, so I'm gonna show you one look at those before they head out the door. They're very bright and colorful. It's kind of the tulips we had left. It's beautiful, I think. We have the woodland touch of the fern and the just a little sprinkle of that wax flower throughout. It looks amazing. So here you go. Well, hello, it is Thursday. <laughs> and so what I'm doing today is I'm heading out to the big greenhouse and I'm going to finish potting up some of the starts that we had left over that didn't make it into the ground in the greenhouse. So basically I'm taking some snapdragons that we had left over and I'm putting them into a larger cell tray. So when we get them, they're really tiny. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and get that going. The girls were gonna work today, but uh, we had some other things come up or the girls did and so they are taking the day off so it's just me here on the farm today so i'll show you what i'm talking about so these are the tiny tiny little trays that are they come in look how tiny that is and we pop them up into something like this which is this is a 72 cell tray but you can see the difference in just a couple of days what happens look at that little tiny guy 
So I'm gonna just get started on that, put my earbuds in, listen to something good. I always like to do that and um, get that going. After I'm done with that, I have to water in here right now. We have the, the water system off. And so I have to hand water after everything. And um, so that's on my list to do. Woo, that sun is bright. And then maybe we'll go check on some starts and I'll take you along for that. So before I fill my tray, I just had some soil that was a little bit uh, rough or dry and it kind of clumped together. So I'm just sifting it through this fine mesh. I'll show you here in just a second. And um, just to get all the bits out and make it just a little more fluffy to work with. My husband made this for me and um, you can kind of see it just has like a fine grate and the soil just falls right through and makes for a very nice growing medium. So you can see that what you're left with is kind of these more sticks. So more like sticks and things like that that you don't want to add to your um, growing tray. So this I will just stick out onto the compost pile or into a garden bed. But underneath you can see how fluffy and nice that is now. And it just went through that sieve, kind of like a colander, and there's no wood chips or anything like that. So if you have really grainy, so if you get a big bag of um, soil from like the hardware store or Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever you're getting your garden soil from, if it's, or potting soil from, if it's really coarse like that, it's a good way to just run it through a grate like that and you'll get a little bit better consistency to do your starts or for me i'm potting up some things and it's just easier to fit into a 72 cell tray so i'm gonna go fill my tray and get started best way to pop these out is to use something like this which is a chopstick and we just are going to poke the bottom a little bit it helps if you get your whatever you're taking out of your tray a little bit moist before like water it pre-water it and i just go along and i have this tray underneath to catch any that fall out but i'm just kind of loosening them i know you can bang this on the the counter and they should all pop out i just don't have that much luck with that so i'm just doing gentle pressure along here making sure that each one kind of pops out and you can tell the root growth has hardly come through that spot just on a few of them so we're catching them right at the right time So on my tray, I keep the soil really fluffy still, and I can just poke through with my finger to create a little well for my new little start. You can see that this will just kind of pop. So you can see that this will just kind of pop down in just like that, and we can just kind of tuck it into its new home. It goes really, really fast. So I finished getting those all potted up into the soil and you can tell how that soil is nice and loose. Just makes it a lot faster and easier to get um, it cozied around those little starts. And then when you water it in, it just makes it so that the soil just kind of integrates to the new little baby start. So it looks like I have a few extras. This is a good way, like, so these trays come in huge, obviously. I think they're like 230, I'm not sure, it's a lot in here and so when i'm filling up the greenhouse and then i've got these extras left over uh, one idea is to grow them on to plant outside if it's too cold um, in your climate to put them out right away a lot of times i like to get them a little more established and uh, then or the other thing is like we have a little farm stand and the niche nursery that we would put them into six packs and that would be something that would be sold off as a beautiful start for somebody to put in their own garden so it's just an idea if you have of like a roadside stand or you know if you're a home gardener you could you know if you had too many you could actually just you know pot them up and give them as gifts to friends and other gardeners even like if they have the plant swaps and things like that it's kind of fun to share what you have grown so don't be afraid to grow too much and be able to share it with others it's just it makes you feel so good I think 
Anyways, I'm gonna get these watered in and water in a few other things, and then we're gonna head on out to the other greenhouse and check on the tulips and how they're doing. I need to water them today. They are not hooked up to water either, so we're gonna do that. And um, I think that's it on my list for today. Today's Thursday. So I'm just taking you through the week. Um, oh, I wanted to show you one last thing. We had planted some snapdragons the other day. The violet, or they're kind of like a light lavender color. It's the Costa Lavender series. And they are just now starting to poke their little heads up really, really nicely. And um, I seeded heavily because what I'm gonna do is prick them out later and I'll probably do that with you guys. Just show you how we do that. It's really easy. You know, snapdragons are one of those things where you can pinch off the top and uh, actually put it back into soil after they've get a few extra sets of leaves and you can just have a whole nether tray of starts. I mean, they just give and give and give. And that's why one of the reasons why we grow so many here on the farm is because they are such a giving, beautiful flower. I mean, edible, they smell amazing. They grow with hardly any fuss, you know, they hardly have any fuss at all. And that you can make multiple, multiple plants off of one start. So anyways, okay, so here we go to watering. So you can see the little uh, new baby starts of the lavender costa, which are one of my favorites. They're coming up, but I seeded heavy because it was old seed. And um, you can see quite a bit of them still germinated. So I'm gonna be pricking those out in a couple weeks once they get a little bit larger than that. It's really hard to do when they're that small. You can see them coming up all the way through there. It's hard to see because they're so little. Okay, so I'm gonna head out to the other greenhouse and we're just gonna check on the tulips that are grown in crates. The soil out there in the crates is pretty sandy and that's kind of what you wanna use for tulips if you're growing for a cut because we pull the whole bulb up. Sounds totally <laughs> ridiculous, but that's what we do. But out here in this greenhouse, I don't have water hooked up yet. That's the plan to do this um, spring is to get some water lines run out here. And so I'm just having to hand water everything at the moment. And anyways, I thought I would give you a sneak peek at everything as it's coming along because it does look amazing, you guys. It looks very pretty. Tomorrow my job is to finish planting this little greenhouse with some more anemones. I have a blue, I believe, and a lavender that we're putting out. I'm not totally for sure on that. Don't quench me. It's easy to forget all the things that you've got going. Okay, so I just wanted to show you really quick this be beautiful greenhouse. It, it, to me, it's beautiful because everything's coming up and it's it's looking great. So we have a bed of anemones. There's several different colors. We use this mainly for our mixed bouquets. We sell some straight bunches, but here's all the tulips in the crates. And then we have some also, don't mind the lawnmower, along this portion of the garden. I think we have a total of about a little over 10,000 tulips this year, which is not a lot in the, the tulip growing world. It's just enough for us to do our mixed bouquets and have them start. Now you can tell this one is a later blooming one. Let me pull the tag. This is, um, this is Foxy Fox Trot. Oh my God, say that five times fast. And then you have a variety over here. This is a double late mix, which you can tell they're, they're barely poking through where this one here is gonna come up a lot sooner. This is a silver parrot, really pretty. So they're already starting to show their little heads here, you guys. Look at that, little babies coming through. Hopefully they turn out well. We'll see, fingers crossed, this is the first time I've grown this. Now I wanted to show you this one. This one is Impression Mix. Now you can tell, look at this leaf. I mean, in the garden, wouldn't that be just gorgeous? That striation of, be it almost looks like a hosta. But it's so, so pretty. That's Impression Mix. And then at the very end here, this one's a little bit taller, a little bit further along. And this is also a single light mix. It's had more water. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna quickly water and get this all done and then head in back to the computer I go. Okay. 
Okay, that job is done and checked off the list for the day. So I'm gonna run back into the other greenhouse and check on the tulips that we have growing in those crates as well. It's a little bit warmer in there, so they're a little bit further along, even though I planted them really late. So anyways, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna head in for a lunch. So I just wanted to um, pop on here because some people have been asking uh, whether or not we do like more educational stuff. And I would say that if you're into that kind of thing, we do have a Patreon. So once a month, I will put out a video on whether I'm designing or I'm doing like, I don't know, planting or gardening. And so it's a little more in depth and a little more personal, I guess. It's a little more of a chit chat kind of vibe to it. But yeah, so if you're interested in doing a little bit more educational and joining our Patreon, that's where we have kind of designated it for now. I don't have any plans to have an online course because I don't know. I just, I haven't gone there yet. I have a lot that I do and um, I, I don't know. I'd rather keep it small and more personal. So that's why I did the Patreon. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more in depth, whether it be designing or growing uh, as a farmer or growing in a garden, uh, that would be the place to join us over there. It's really inexpensive and um, you know, you can join for as long as you like or the, until you feel like you've got a grasp on whatever it is that you're looking for. So we just started that up. So it'd be fun to have more people. We have, I think about five right now. <laughs> it's very small, but that's, you know, that's where you gotta start. So that's what I have going as far as education goes. That's just a little tidbit for y'all to check out. Okay, here are the tulips. So you can see how much bigger these tulips are. They're a lot taller. We literally planted these just a little while ago. I got them in. They are a chilled, what they call a C5. So they've been chilling a long, long time. So these are growing in our greenhouse. This is a double walled greenhouse. So we have a layer of air through these two layers, which makes it a lot warmer. We have wall end walls on and we keep those closed or are able to regulate the temperature in here. Look at this stock, you guys. I need to do like a tour here shortly. I feel like we're almost getting to that point. We have some Bells Ireland down there. These are all anemones. They're, we planted these ones late. We have some sweet peas coming up and then those are all snap dragons over there and then our mother mums mother mums that's hard to say are over there we're gonna start taking cuttings of those and getting them potting on probably should have started that a week ago but yeah it's looking really good in here well that is it for today's project so i will join you back again tomorrow friday um the end of the week and it doesn't mean that i don't work thursday or saturday and sunday but for the most part, it's pretty much this time of year, I try and focus on family and projects inside the house. So that's what we're doing this week. But for today, that's it out in the greenhouse. And so I'm gonna run in, have some lunch and get back on the computer, doing all the wedding stuff, answering questions and getting those all designed up. Plus we have a few other projects that are, we're going on right now. They're still in the works and I will be sharing more details about that to you. Um, but I, I also kind of let my Patreons know early on if we have something coming down the pike. So like I said, if you're interested, you know, we'd love to have you and it's just going to be a, a really fun community where we're going to be learning together. And obviously I don't know everything. Um, and so it's kind of fun to have somebody else kind of chime in and suggest things and especially down in the comments and stuff. But anyways, um, that's it for today. I will join you back here in just a few minutes. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Friday. We finally made it. Um, today I'm putting together a couple arrangements for a long-standing client that we have. Uh, so here on the farm, we grow flowers for wholesale and we do a large mixed bouquet program. And then we also do weddings and event design, but we also do a few designs like this, like for, we have a lot of wineries around us and we have just some corporate event places and things that just kind of have like standing orders with us. When the vineyard season or wine wine season starts, we start to get more requests for things like this. So I got a last minute request, they forgot to ask. And so of course I said yes, just because they're the long standing client. So I just went down to our local grocery store and of course this is the day after 
or two days after Valentine's Day and I'm like, there's not gonna be many flowers, but I found some really cool stuff. So I'm keeping it pretty neutral just because the vibe of the place that we're designing for, I kind of know what it looks like. I know their style and um, so it's a little more corporate-y, I guess. So we'd be considered, there's a term out in the land of flowers, flower farmers is called a farmer florist. And that's somebody that generally will harvest florals from their gardens, yards, farm, and put designs together. Uh, we are also um, considered like a traditional florist in the way that we would order in flowers from the markets the wholesale markets and uh, be able to do designs year round. Not everybody likes to do that. They like to take the winters off. We just, for whatever reason, fell into this a long time ago and uh, we just keep plugging away at doing designs for folks uh, just as a traditional florist would. So, and we just, we don't have a lot of florists around where we're at, so it works out for a lot of folks. And a lot of people like our designs, they're very different. So what you're gonna see here today is me taking a traditional floral flowers from a grocery store and mixing it with local foliages. And so I went up to my parents' house and cut, I cut here on our farm, I cut some stuff on the side of the road. And so this is gonna give it this very natural, very organic feel to it and kinda, you know, when you see things out in nature that's surrounding you at the time and you add that into some of these flowers that are not blooming, it just makes it feel a little more right. I don't know how to explain that, but if it's completely out of season or completely out of context, then sometimes it feels a little jarring. I don't, anyways, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but if you do, leave me a comment below and tell me. So I have two tall vases, or I'm sorry, not two tall vases, I have one tall vase and I have one shorter vase. So they asked for one stately, very tall arrangement and then one that's gonna go on a welcome table. So I'm gonna start with the big guy first. Now I chose these vases, I kinda like the color. It's kind of odd for me to like this color, but it's kind of like this, I would say kind of turquoisey blue. I kind of like it with the colors we're going with. So I'm gonna show you the flowers up close and personal before I start designing. And then I'm gonna uh, show you also the foliage that I'm using and the ones that, I, so all of the foliage came from my farm, the side of the road and my parents' house. I will go through the list with you before we get started. So I have a little bit of hydrangea that I bought in. Um, this is just the green kind of white hydrangea, the basic one. Hydrangea is interesting. I just pop them upside down in water because they drink from their flower uh, head instead of the stem. So I did that. Uh, there's a couple carnations. There's a few mums. It looks like a white one. And then this is more of like a button mum, which is a green. We have some Alstroemeria, which is starting to open. I wanted it fairly closed because it's gonna be a warm space for a long time. There was a lily, which could be as the show flower or the, the main stem. So a lot of people don't like lilies. This one does not smell, but I'm gonna take out the center stamens here, the little pollen, just because it will make a mess. We have some Dusty Miller, and the Dusty Miller, what I've used before, there are certain plants like Dusty Miller, Nine Bark, tend to wilt after you cut them. And so we use what's called Quick Dip. So Quick Dip you can use on something like this and it makes it hold longer and not wilt, especially in the sun, because Dusty Miller and Nine Bark tend to do that. Okay, and then I had these beautiful blue delphinium spikes, and I thought that would be kind of fun next to the color of the vase that I chose. So as far as foliage goes, I have some osoberry, which is native here to Oregon, and it grows wild in the woodland. It's very, very uh, beautiful with those white lacy flowers. So I got, that actually grows in the woods at my parents' house, so I picked it up there. I also got some cat cans, which is from the birch tree. So I got some cat can just branches from there. This is, a California lilac, which has blue flowers on it in the summer months, but it's kind of prickly. I like it. 
It's just beautiful foliage, and so I picked up some of that. I have some laurel. It's just kind of a base structure, and I think that's it as far as foliage goes. I like to try and just keep it to three foliage, three foliages at a time. I like to keep it at three foliages at a time. It tends to work pretty well and not get so fussy. Okay, let's go design. Okay, so I thought I would just go ahead and design and let you just kind of watch today. And um, what I'm going to do is start with my sticks, which is going to be the birch and the cat cans. And then I'm going to start putting in my foliage next. And I like to work in threes generally. And so, and then also to have three different foliages in the design. I always use my lamp as my height. So I want the, the cat cans to be taller than this because the space I'm designing in is very big. And that tends to work for large spaces when I've d used my lamp. As long as I'm past this little rim, then I'm pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and then you're just gonna follow along with me. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. It's just kind of a relaxing indoor studio design and we'll see how it turns out. Here we go. So a lot of times I will crush or split the top of the, like a woody stem. I guess the bottom of a woody stem, I will cut that or crush it all the way up and that will allow it to just drink more water in. Woody stems sometimes will struggle a little bit with that. Yeah, I'm definitely touching my light. <laughs> we'll keep these shorter ones for the little guy. We'll do that one later. You just basically want to split it up this side. Uh, the one thing like lilac does really well splitting it. Uh, some people will just take a knife and do that, but you can kind of see here, it's got a nice split. Some people will crush it with a hammer and just to kind of splay out the ends and then that will allow your woody cut to do better. Okay, so the big one is done. I just want to touch base on kind of my design theory on this one. I wanted to keep it very woodland, very natural and all whites. And then the other one is going to have the blue in it just because I didn't have enough stems to make it look really cool. So I'm gonna start on the little one next, but I love how this turned out just very, very organic, don't you think? I mean, I love how, so this is the front. It's really hard to see in this studio, but this is the front and one of the designs or one thing to keep in mind is to kind of make sure that underneath the vase it looks really nice. So like right at the edge, making sure you fill in all those gaps, it makes it look very, very professional when you go to do this. And then to keep those elevated heights. So you'll see that some of this Ostromeria is tucked down low and then another one is tucked a little bit higher above and then we've got like all these sprays of everything kind of coming out all the sprays kind of coming out just creating this very romantic wild kind of woodland look i love it very organic looking okay on to the little one
I love how this one turned out. I love this style of vase, the low. I mean, this is just really, really elegant. It kind of gives you that old world feel to it. And yeah, I mean, it's hard to see in the studio here. What I need to do is get a wall that is just plain and and uh, that doesn't have a lot of fuss behind it, just so you can kind of get a better sense of what I'm designing and how I'm doing it. But I love all the textures. And for some reason, the cat cans are just really, really elevating this design. And um, I'm loving that. So aren't those delphiniums just the sweetest? I am getting so excited for the gardens. I don't know about you guys, but oh, I think this just turned out really, really nice. Okay, well, that's it for my day. Um, this Friday, we had some other things going. Well, that is it. I hope you enjoyed that little design therapy with me. <laughs> I'm. It did my soul um, really, really good, and I hope it did yours as well. Leave me a comment below what you think of this beautiful winter design. Isn't it stunning, you guys? Oh, can't get enough of it. Okay, here's another look at both of them side by side, just giving you kind of a glimpse at these two beautiful winter arrangements. Oh, you guys, I am absolutely loving this. Look at that, just, you know, adding in nature's beauty of just the tendrils and all the woodland pieces and all the, just kind of what I have around into those grocery store flowers. I mean, it just elevated it to a whole nother level. I am absolutely, in love with it. I do like how that green blue vase turned out with this design. I wasn't sure at first, but I really do like that as well. Okay, look at my mess. Oh, that means I had fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek look into the winter garden, our flower farming, everything we're doing in a week. Uh, in the winter. So pretty, um, I don't know, I call it uneventful, but kind of exciting at the same time. We've got a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of new starts coming, as you can see, and it's just kind of fun this time of year. Just get your hands in the soil and do something, and it's warm in the greenhouses, and yeah, we have all the things. Anyways, until next time, much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Carly House very soon. Bye-bye.